everybody. Cigar Box Nation TV here. I'm Ben Giddy Baker. We're on the Giddy Juke Shack stage today. It's still Americana month here on Cigar Box Nation TV. And we've got some things to show you. We're focusing on fiddles, mandolins, and other things like that this week. Some of the, uh, you know, we covered, what did we cover? We covered, uh, goodness, dulcimers. Then we got into banjos. We had banjo week. All sorts of good stuff. I'm going to try to bring this up on my phone so I can see your comments as we go here. Because I always like responding to people directly. So uh, today we're going to be talking fiddles. We're going to be talking one string fiddles. I built one yesterday out yesterday afternoon out in the Giddy Shop. I'm going to be talking about that, playing a little bit. I've got this little hybrid uh, ukulele dulcimer thing that I built Friday uh, with some help from Glenn and Nick. We had a good old time out there in the shop. So let me get this up here. I can see some comments. Hopefully you got my sound down. Scott Tebow out there already. Thank you, Scott. Good to see you again. So before, I'm going to play a little song here. I'm just trying to put a strap on my new instrument before I get into the song playing. And I couldn't find anything handy aside from this old Balin twine here. So I'm making myself a Balin twine strap for my cigar box. What am I calling this thing? The Gita Yukimer? The Gita Dulcilele? I don't even know what the heck it is. There have been more names for that. Than <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been thinking all weekend about what I'm going to call this thing. And I'm not quite there yet, but it's a cool little thing. Three strings, open G. Some of you, I know Scott was on the uh, broadcast on uh, Friday. He was watching as we build it. And Phil Hayes, hopefully we'll get Phil joined in here before too long. Now, fortunately... I thought it was a mistake at the time. Three strings, I drilled a fourth tuner hole, and someone, I, don't, I can't remember who, suggested, oh, might have been Phil, said, hey, make that your strap uh, holder. And I said, you know, that's a great idea. So, gonna get this kinda sized so it's in a good position. Now this isn't normally what you would wanna use for strap material. It's a little uh, thin, but you know, I decided I wanted to play this song I'm going to do, standing up, and to effectively play standing up, it sure helps to have a strap of some sort. I'll put something a little better on it later, but for now, a little bale and twine, a couple of knots. Isn't that kind of the heart of the do-it-yourself movement? I think so. Did I leave a pick around? Usually, ah, there's one. So I, uh... This thing is 17 inch scale, tenor ukulele scale, diatonic fretting, like a dulcimer, nylon strings, like a, a, a ukulele or a, a classical style guitar, a cigar box, three string open G. It's kind of like a hybrid between a cigar box guitar, a dulcimer, and a ukulele. <laughs> I tell you, I've been picking on it all weekend. I took it to a jam session Sunday. It's a fun little instrument. I don't, uh, I don't want to get too carried away, but it might be the perfect personal picking instrument uh, for just sitting on your back porch or your front porch, whatever porch you want to sit on. But anyway, I'm going to do a song here, get some of the junk out of the way. And I'm still kind of working on this one. Phil. Hey, hey, Phil Hayes. All right, maybe bring the camera up a little bit there, Nick. Yep. And I'll try to get the uh, get the mic in position. So this is one by Bruce Springsteen, the boss. And I stole Bruce's coffee mug just for the occasion. <laughs> so Bruce Springsteen on the three string.
time sack, someone took a knife, baby, edgy and all, cut a six inch valley through the middle of my soul. Sometimes I wake up with my sheets soaking wet and a freight train running through the middle of my head, and you, you heal my desire. Hey little girl, is your daddy home? Daddy, go away and leave you all alone. Got a bad desire. Oh, 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 I'm on fire. Oh, 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 I'm on fire. Oh, 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 I'm on fire. <laughs> there you go, little Bruce Springsteen on the three string get a ukulele awesomer box thing so uh got a couple of announcements here i'll bring it back down so i got my script got all sorts of stuff going on up here today uh it's americana month here on cigar box nation tv still been doing it all of july we're nearly to the end and this final week as i said is all about fiddles one string fiddles four string fiddles uh mandolins uh all sorts of good stuff, um, including this thing. And we've got some features on CigarBoxNation.com. Shane Spiel has updated the front page with all of the features that tie in with this week of the fiddles and things. We've got, excuse me, got a couple of good ones from Jim Morris on there playing the uh, uh, an actual cigar box mandolin. I think one of him playing a, a cigar box fiddle that he built and all sorts of other good stuff free plans historic plans build your own all kinds of great stuff on there so um this is also a how-to tuesday on cigar box nation tv we do them every tuesday we try to show you something about how to do something and if you've been watching the last four weeks or so we've done fretting how to fret i've walked you through various steps of fretting we've got a different take on it now this is a video that glenn watt recorded a couple of years ago of his method of how to fret your first cigar box guitar fretboard. He gives you the basics, the bare bones and easy to understand language, which he has a gift for. So we're gonna bring that video in here and show it to you, and we'll be right back live with you once it wraps up. It's about four minutes, so nothing heavy. Hey there, it's Glenn. And in this video, we're gonna make ourselves a fretboard. From marking out where the frets need to be, to cutting the fret slots, to installing the frets, to filing them down and dressing them up. All right, let's do this. Here's what I'm going to be using for this project. We have clamps, a fine grit sandpaper, that's 220, a flat file, square, a fret dressing file, some flush cut end snips, but if what you have are side snips, that'd be great too. Uh, anything smaller than this is going to start to make your life a little more difficult than you want it to be. Now from CB Giddy Crafter Supply, I have a mallet, a fret end file, a cut saw, a fretting scale template, and then from a box store, I picked up a quarter inch by one and a half inch piece of poplar, uh, which is 6.35 millimeters by 38.1 millimeters. I forgot to mention one of the most important parts, the fret wire. I buy mine in bulk, medium, medium. From CB Giddy Crafter Supply, you can get it in single packages, enough to do about two fretboards. On this particular fretting scale length template, there are multiple scale lengths. 24 through 25 and a half inches. I'm going to be using the 25 inch scale for this particular build, which is 63.5 centimeters. I'm going to align the nut end of my fretboard with the nut on the template, and then carefully, one at a time, mark out where each fret line is going to be. Using your square, transfer each of those lines that you just marked all the way across the fretboard. With your fretboard firmly clamped into place, use your square to butt up against those lines and use your pull cut saw to carefully score and then cut fretboard deep enough so that the teeth are on your fret saw are no longer exposed and that will be a deep enough slot.
Now is the time to sand down your fretboard to get it as smooth as you want it. With your fretboard firmly clamped into place, line up the tang which is on the bottom of your fret wire with your fret slot. Nestle it in there gently and go ahead and use your mallet to tap your fret wire into place. Now go ahead and cut off the excess fret wire as flush to the fretboard as you can. And repeat all the way on down the fretboard. Using your flat file, file the rough ends of the frets flush up against the side of the fretboard. The fret end file is set at the perfect angle so that it gives you a nice bevel at the end of your frets that makes it easy on your fingers when playing. Continue to file away at the ends of the frets until the file itself is brought up close to the fretboard. before we hit it with the dressing file. With this little bugger of a file and its rounded edge down towards the fretboard, use long strokes to file off the ends of these frets. Run your fingers up and down the sides of the fretboard. If you find anything still rough, you can go back and file it again. But if you're comfortable with your work, you can use that 220 grit sandpaper and just buff up the sides of the fret ends of the files. Bada bing, there you have it. You're the proud owner of a fretboard. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me at glenn at glennwatt.com. Check out where I celebrate the cigar box guitar at glennwatt.com. And until the next time, see ya. All right, we're back. Uh, take off the uh, local audio feedback there. All right, everybody, we're back. Hope you enjoyed that video from Glenn there. He does great work, as most of you already know, uh, showing you a, a simpler, uh, uh, the basics approach to fretting. So uh, our first, that was our first feature. Our second feature today is the one string cigar box guitar or cigar box fiddle. Now these come from these plans that are available on CigarBoxGuitar.com. We've got them on CigarBoxNation.com. They're from a 1948 edition of Science and Mechanics magazine. Uh, March 1948, these came out uh, by W.J. Sutherland. And he walks you through the basics of building a one-string fiddle, pretty much like this one, uh, from a broomstick, a cigar box, a string, and a couple of other bits. So I built this yesterday out in the CB Giddy shop. I uh, followed these plans somewhat. I always uh, deviate a little bit from any printed plans that I use, but uh, there are some key things in here I want to go over. And like I say, if you go on to cigarboxguitar.com, Shane might put a link out there if he's with us. Uh, he might not be with us, that's all right. Um, Go on cigarboxguitar.com, there's a, uh, over on the right hand side, there's the categories, and you'll find historic cigar box instrument plans and that sort of thing. And these are right in there. Um, and I'm going to step through them a little bit, in a little bit, but first I wanted to play something. Now, I, disclaimer here, I'm not a master uh, bow instrument player, but this is one I did on... Uh, must have been Thursday last week on a different instrument. Oh, and uh, Nick, um, I forgot to turn off the... Uh, we try to turn the air conditioner on in here when in between uh, live segments because it gets pretty hot. Anyway...
So that is Near My God to Thee, or an approximation of it. Um, you know, that was played on the violin as the Titanic was sinking. That's the, the popular, uh, I don't know if it's a myth or a true story, um, but they recreated that in the movie, The Titanic. The string band up there on the, the deck playing Near My God to Thee as the ship was sinking. So anytime I pick up a bow and start trying to play something, that is one of the <laughs> songs that immediately comes to mind. Um, and I'll tell you, this, for a, a primitive, simple instrument, it's one string, a cigar box, and a broomstick, it can, it has pretty good sound. My playing might not really bring it out. Um, but to get nice clear notes out of an instrument like this is actually harder than getting them out of a, a via you know a, a conventional violin but there is good music in there to be made now i want to talk a little bit about the building of this um, i've told you the pdf of these plans are available on cigarboxguitar.com and i believe there's links to them on cigarboxnation.com as well on the free plans page um, some key points from these instructions he talks about how to prepare your box here in the bottom of the first paragraph. And he says, sandpaper the inside of the cigar box and apply two coats of shellac, allowing the first coat to dry before putting on the second. Now that was kind of interesting to me, shellacking the inside of the cigar box. When I build cigar box guitars, when we build them here, we never worry all that much about the inside of the box. And the idea of shellacking the inside, sealing it and adding a, a hard finish in there made me wonder, and I'm sure, I'm sure you guys out there already know all about this and somebody can comment on it, what will that do for the sound? Does it make a brighter sound? Does it make it more resonant? Does it mellow the sound? Shellacking the inside of the cigar box. And as I talked about during the Boeing episode on Thursday, what's interesting about a bowed instrument, I mean, you can kind of play this like a diddly bow if you don't drop your slide all over the place. So basically it's a diddly bow with very low action so that it can be, uh, you can get the string down to the fingerboard, but when you bow it, you know, when you pick, you get that initial attack, that initial hit, the volume, and then it quickly fades depending on the sustain of the instrument. Um, Phil says he thinks that it'd probably be brighter tone. I think he's probably right, that it, it would make it a, a brighter, um, maybe a little more trebly in its resonance. Now, I actually, in this, I didn't shellac it because I was in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry. Um, I used tongue oil. The tongue oil that I recommend... Um, on the, the Giddy must-haves page on the Giddy site um, because that has, I don't know if it's polyurethane in there, some sort of alphytic resin stuff and it, hard, it penetrates and hardens. So I put two doses of that on the inside of this. So I might have gotten some of that brightening, probably not to the extent that shellac would. Um, but when you bow an instrument, I'm getting myself distracted here, you're basically putting the, the string in the box under a constant vibration. There's no hit and fade, it's... So it's more of a, a constant, depending on how hard you bow and how you bow it. But So it kind of makes the box ring in a little bit different way and you get different sounds. That's why the bowed instruments are such a, they have a distinctive sound. Um, so, key points from the instructions. I keep getting myself distracted here. The shellacking the inside of the box I thought was interesting. Another thing I thought was interesting is he tells you how to make a tapered hole to fit the peg. I didn't I didn't hand carve a, a, a friction tapered peg for this one. That's what the instructions say to do, but I got in a hurry and put an Econo tuner on there. But he's saying that if you carve a, a tapered peg or take a, a tapered peg off of a violin to use, the way that you taper your hole to fit, excuse me, it's easily done by wrapping a piece of fine sandpaper once around the peg with a rotating motion, sand the quarter inch hole, 
to the taper of the peg. So you don't need a special reamer, you don't need a separate tool, you just put some sandpaper around the peg and use it to ream out the hole to be the right size. But he says careful not to go too, too deep with it. Take sandpaper off the peg and fit it frequently because if you overdo it, the peg will go in too far and you won't get the grip. Another little trick for, uh, for friction pegs like that, carved wooden pegs, is the fiddle still in here? I'll show you what I mean. Another trick, if they're not sticking, if they don't have enough friction, you can put a little rosin, the same rosin you put on the bow, you can put on the peg. So see, these have carved wooden pegs that fit into holes and tune up with friction. There's no gear in there. There's just friction holding it in place. So if they're not sticking good enough, a little bit of rosin on the peg will help with that. Let's get that fiddle out of the way here. All right. And get my CB Giddy cigar box fiddle back up here. Now this has a, this style of instrument has a long history. It actually had a long history uh, by the time that 1948 rolled around when this uh, these plans were published. Uh, vaudeville performers use these. W.C. Fields, there's a very early movie of him playing one and it, it implodes and there's all sorts of shenanigans ensue. But this style of single one string instrument goes way back. There's a uh, an instrument from Japan, I believe. Uh, if Shane was on, he'd tell us the name of it. I can't remember it offhand. Shenzhen or something. That's basically the same thing, but often with like a metal uh, or, or a, a wooden handmade wooden box resonator. So it goes way back. I'm keeping an eye on the comments here in case any questions pop up. So I was going to try to, uh, let's see, did I get through my list here? Other uh, key things from these instructions. You can make your own bow using a wire coat hanger that you take apart and straighten and some white silk thread strung from end to end. You kind of make a hook on one end and a hook on the other and you string a bunch of white silk thread on there which then can be rosined and used as a bow probably with decent results. This is an actual violin bow with horse hair I believe on it. It might be synthetic hair, I'm not sure. So making your own violin bow, that's a cool thing from these. And then uh, he recommends, the author recommends using a third string from a guitar which would be a G string, the middle G and that you tune it to a middle G. It has about a 30 inch scale length. I didn't follow that. I probably should have. I'd like to see what it sounds like with that wound G string on it. I used an 18 gauge plain steel string just to be cantankerous. So I've come up with a little, uh, oh he says one more thing. This violin has a range of two and a half octaves and should be tuned to the middle G on the piano. Phil says he's been wondering when I'm gonna make a bow. I'll tell you. They're so cheap, and I like making the instruments so much better. I don't know if I'll ever make a violin bow, Phil, but maybe. Who knows? And Scott Tebow says the Mongolians have a two-string instrument. Can't remember the name. We posted some videos of those instruments being played on Cigar Box Nation by some Mongolian uh, ladies. I think there were three of them playing the heck out of those things. So here's a little bluesy thing I tried to come up with. We'll see how it comes out here. I'm not sure. tell you there's nothing easier to do than sound bad with a bow I'll tell you that so that is um, 
That is the one string fiddle. They are easy to build. It took me about an hour yesterday. I happened to have an old broomstick around and I discovered this is a reclaimed broomstick or shovel handle. I'm not sure what this came off of. It's pretty beat up. This was from something that was in my grandpa's garage and it saw a lot of use over the years. And the surface isn't all that smooth which can lead to some interesting intonation. So using a smoother broomstick can make it a little easier to play. Um, I, as I said, I didn't use a friction tuner. I kind of filed down the top and the bottom of the neck here and got an Econo tuner through it. I made a bridge out of a piece of scrap maple. And I used for the tailpiece one of our new, not yet released or not yet listed, one string individual tailpieces cut uh, made from stainless steel that you can use one on a diddly bow, you could use two on a two string chugger, you could use three on a cigar box guitar, four. They're basically a modular individual tailpiece design made from stainless steel. You bend it to what you need and it works pretty good. So look for those on cbgiddy.com soon. So Kelly Archibald is saying when Bertie Wooster played the banjo -lele, his valet Jeeves threatened to quit. I think if you uh, recall there, uh, Kelly, uh, Jeeves did quit and went to work for uh, the uh, would-be father-in-law of Bertie Wooster. But let's not, get, uh, let's not get too carried away. I love me some Wooster and Jeeves. Some of the best comedy ever written in my somewhat skewed opinion. All right, so that's the Cigar Box Fiddle. They're fun. Build one. We might do a uh, another video last Friday when we were building this thing. I live broadcast the entire video on the CB Giddy page. Uh, it was about two hours it ended up being. We just had a good time out in the shop, very relaxed. Probably going to do that again this Friday. Whether we're building a, another one of these cigar box fiddles or we're building a couple of canjos out of the... Uh, beer cans that Nick and I <laughs> empty, emptied last week. We're going to do something, hopefully this Friday, if nothing else comes up, and try to make that a Friday tradition on the CB Giddy page to live broadcast some fun time from the shop. All right, Chuck Austin. Common name for the Mongolian instrument is the horsehead fiddle. It has a Mongol name, but I can't remember it. Yep, probably couldn't pronounce it if I could remember it. <laughs> Chuck. Phil, so Phil had asked if you had the fret positions marked out on that as well. I do. I need to make those permanent, but I wanted to be fairly sure first that I that I had them in the right place. Because before you go cutting or using a sharpie or something, it's good to be sure. But yeah, fret positions definitely help. Uh, I'm sure there are people out there who can do it all by ear. I am not one of those people. So yeah, mark in your frets. Okay, so the next uh, topic that I wanted to cover is, well, what uh, Scott was just saying, he wants to try to build a, a dulcimer like that, uh, they're saying they lost the audio, but it looks like uh, it's still going. Anyway, um, building a dulcimer like this little guy here. I can tell you I'm going to be doing more with this design. I got a couple of tweaks I want to do. You may see this available from CB Giddy before too long, both in uh, finished and in kit version. And I got another another song here. I've been doing a lot of talking. A Johnny Cash song. And I just... One thing about playing a, a diatonically fretted instrument like this. I took this to a jam session on, on Sunday and was trying to play it along with some folks. Um, and in a jam session, there's usually a lot of capoing goes on. People will capo to get to the key they need for singing, which is a good idea. Anyway, well... Capoing a diatonic instrument yields some unexpected results. Because some of the frets are missing, uh, capoing it and expecting to play the same chord forms, it, doesn't, it didn't work for me. There might be a way to do it, but I, I couldn't find it. So I've been learning some new chord forms on this. Once I get a better handle on it all, I, I'll try to do up a little uh, chord sheet or something to go along with it. Uh-oh, Nick's giggling. What's happening? <laughs> well, I don't know, uh, Phil. The the hot glue. I hot glued this fretboard on, which I had never done before. I I didn't expect to finish the instrument during that live broadcast Friday, 
And as it got closer, I'm like, well, you know, I could finish this thing, but not if I have to wait for tight bond to dry to put my fretboard on. So I grabbed some clamps and globbed some hot glue on there and got it on, and by God, it's working. So, I've got a Johnny Cash song for you here in the key of C. So I'm playing uh, chord forms on this diatonically fretted GDG instrument. And of course, they're uh, based on what the chord forms would be on a chromatically fretted instrument, like the two cent Jenny there. But it takes a little bit of a little bit of changing, so we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> Don't want no aggravation when my train has left the station. If you're there or not, I may not even know. Have a round and remember things we did that weren't so tender. Let the train blow the whistle when I go. On my old guitar, sell tickets so someone can finally pick it. Tell the girls down at the Ritz I said hello. And tell the gossipers and liars I will see them in the fire. Let the train blow the whistle when I go. train blow the whistle how we doing on here great tune one of my favorites Jason Sloan says well I'm glad you like it Jason now my phone shows that the video is reloading or that it's uh, pegged up a little bit there uh, what's it showing on the Facebook uh, preview screen Nick? Uh, on my phone is still going okay and on Facebook it is still, still going. going all right good all right no worries we're gonna finish it off here so that is the uh, the reason, I'll, I'll talk briefly about the reasons I built this thing. Um, I wanted something short scale length, 17 inch scale, so that the chord form reaches would be easy. I wanted nylon strings because they're easier on the fingers, they're easier to play, and it puts less tension on the instrument. Because I used one of these old cardboard uh, Swisher Sweets boxes, which don't have the structural strength that the wooden boxes do. Um, so. I did that. I wanted diatonic fretting to make it even easier to play. I wanted it to be a very accessible instrument and combine some of the features of, of a number of other things. And it came out really nice and I'm really happy with it. So uh, I've got one more thing to talk about here today. Let me see if I can get this refreshed so I can get the comments. One other special event today. And for this event, I've got to pull out a different instrument. And that is this one here, the Arkansas Tenor, designed and built for A.J. Gaither, because today is A.J. Gaither's birthday. I don't know how old, and I don't care. He's a hell of a guy. I'm glad to be friends with him, and we send him a happy birthday today. 
And I don't know if I know one of his songs well enough to do. I did uh, Last Free Exit last week, and I've been working on Train Hand Blues. But I don't think I quite have that one. So, he didn't write this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it on his guitar. I hear the train a-coming, it's rolling round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison, and time keeps dragging on. But the train keeps rolling on down to San Antonio. When I was just a baby, my mom told me, son, always be a good boy, don't you ever play with guns. I shot man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear the whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. Well, I bet this rich folks eating on a fancy dining car, probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars. Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those feet keep on moving, and that's what tortures me. Prison, if that railroad train was mine, bet I'd move it all a little farther down the line. Oh, now far from Folsom Prison, it's where I want to stay. And I'd let the lonesome whistle will blow my blues away. And I'd let the lonesome whistle will blow my blues away. Folsom Prison ended out. Happy birthday to AJ Gaither out there. We've got these awesome guitars available on cbgiddy.com and a big chunk of the proceeds from everyone we sell goes directly to AJ to help keep him on the road, keep him rolling gas money, get him into a hotel room every once in a while, keep him out there making his music, writing his music. He does all originals and it's really good stuff. So help support AJ and take a look at one of these guitars or at least one of the sets of strings. We sell this exact string set, which is called Arkansas Tenor. It's like the four lower pitch strings on a standard guitar. You can use partial six string chords on it. If you already know a little bit about playing six string, you can pick this thing right up and be strumming right along in no time. So check that out. Boy, I tell you, Nick, if I had been able to reach that kazoo over there during Folsom, yeah. I'd, have done, I'd have done a kazoo solo <laughs> in the middle of Folsom prison. So hope you enjoy this episode, Cigar Box Nation TV. We do these every weekday here on the Cigar Box Nation Facebook page. We have a lot of fun doing it, and we're not just doing it to get our faces on, uh, on live video. The reason behind all of this is to spread the word, to spread the movement, the, the idea that anyone anywhere can build their own instrument and make music on it. That's what it's all about. That's why we do it. And from the results we're seeing, it's working. New people are discovering these instruments, getting into building them, and having fun with it and making music. And for me, that's what it's all about. So... That's all I've got for today. Happy building, everybody.